Hello, I'm Trouty Grandy. I'm a certified financial planner and partner of Grandy Financial Services, author of Ophthalmology Times Money Matters column, which offers you the Ophthalmology Times e-magazine's resource page. This video is the first part of a two-part presentation entitled Estate Planning Basics for Everyone Helping Protect Yourself and Your Legacy. I will begin by introducing some basic estate planning concepts in this video, and once this fundamental framework has been established, a second video will be released with additional information. I want to emphasize that the concept I'll present over the next several minutes apply to everyone regardless of age or net worth. These are not just for your parents, not just for yourselves, and not just for death. These concepts can help you protect and care for yourselves and your families at death but also during your lifetime. Today, I will start by explaining five key estate planning documents, four of which everyone should have. In the next video, I will move on to talk about the roles and responsibilities of the people you name to serve in those documents, as well as how an account or an asset is titled. I will also discuss what types of assets have beneficiary designations and why it's important to ensure that the people you name on those designations are consistent with your overall estate strategy. As part of a basic estate plan, you should have a will, a durable power of attorney for financial matters, a healthcare power of attorney, and a living will. Some people will want to add a revocable living trust. The first four documents provide the foundation for any estate plan and help you stay in control. If you already have these documents, be sure to review them regularly. Life events such as death, birth, divorces, marriages, inheritance, or a change in state residency often lead to changes in your goals, so your documents should change as well. It is important to update estate planning documents when moving from one state to another because state laws vary. It is always a good idea to make sure that your estate planning documents are designed to work well in the state where you live. You should also review your basic documents as changes occur in federal or state estate tax laws. At a minimum, every adult, regardless of age or net worth, should have a will, durable power of attorney for financial matters, power of attorney for health care, and a living will in place. These will help you control your assets and health care decisions both while you are living and at death. Here's a tip. If you have children over age 18 going off to college, they should have these same documents. Your 18 or 19 year old child is considered an adult and if they have an accident or illness that requires hospitalization, you'll probably want to be able to talk about their condition with the doctors. Without a power of attorney, the hospital doctors may not be able to discuss the details of the child's condition. A simple way to avoid this situation is to help the adult child prepare these documents. Let's take a look at each of these documents in more detail. A will accomplishes a number of objectives. First, it provides directions for distributing your assets to your family and other beneficiaries upon your death. Your attorney can customize its provisions to meet your needs. You appoint a personal representative, also known as executor executrix, to account for all the assets, your liabilities, to pay final expenses, pay any taxes due, and distribute your assets. A will is the only way to designate a guardian for minor children. Should something happen to you, a judge must still approve this appointment, but at least you have expressed your wishes through this document. If you have minor children, it's wise to include a trust to manage assets for them, at least until they reach age 18. To be effective, a will must be filed in probate court. Probate is a judicial process for managing your assets if you become incapacitated and for transferring your assets in an orderly fashion when you die. The court oversees payment of liabilities and distribution of assets. Generally, your personal representative will need to employ an attorney. Because a will does not take effect until you die, it cannot provide for management of your assets if you become incapacitated. This is the reason why you also want to have a durable power of attorney. This document lets you name another trusted person to manage your financial and business affairs during your lifetime, if you cannot. A general durable power of attorney allows your agent to perform all duties you typically perform, whereas a limited durable power of attorney covers only specific events such as selling property or investing assets. Your agent should act in your best interest with financial and business affairs, maintain accurate records, keep your property separate from his or hers, and avoid conflicts of interest. This person will be able to sell, invest, and spend your assets, so it's imperative to select someone you trust. As you can imagine, having such wide-ranging powers opens the door for something such as elder financial abuse, which occurs in some families. 
You can give this power to that person immediately or your attorney can write in a trigger that prompts that person to take over for you, such as being designated incapacitated by one or two doctors, as specified in the document. Which is better? There is no right or wrong answer. You should discuss with your family and your attorney what is best suitable for your situation. If possible, it's wise to name both a primary and backup or contingent agent. This will be helpful if the primary agent predeceases you. A power of attorney for healthcare is similar to your durable power of attorney for financial matters, but this document gives someone the power to make medical and healthcare decisions for you if you are not able. This document helps avoid court intervention and allows you to empower a person you trust to make those decisions on your behalf if you are unable to communicate your wishes. It's not enough to sign documents and put them in a drawer. You need to have a frank conversation with the person who will be acting on your behalf and perhaps others in your family about how you want your medical care to be handled, especially in the event of a terminal illness. Unlike a healthcare power of attorney, a living will establishes your wishes for life-prolonging medical care should you become incapacitated. These are also sometimes called advanced directives or healthcare directives. A key advantage of this document is that it clearly states what you want relating to end-of-life care. The previous four documents are essential as a starting point. This fifth document, a revocable living trust, is one that you may also want to discuss with your attorney. It may be suitable for your situation, but in some cases, your attorney may suggest that it is not needed. If your attorney suggests creating a revocable living trust, you can be your own trustee, you continue to receive all of the income from the trust assets, and you have full access to the trust principal. A revocable living trust can be altered at any point during your life. You can change beneficiaries or discontinue the trust at your discretion. At your death, this trust becomes irrevocable. The person you name as successor trustee will then follow instructions in the trust to manage the assets and liabilities and if your trust directs to distribute the assets in your trust. You should realize that this ongoing management affects only assets that you have retitled in the name of your trust. If your attorney suggests a revocable living trust, you will want to take his or her instructions regarding retitling assets and accounts. You will still need a poor overwill to govern any assets that are not titled in the name of the trust and also to appoint guardians for minors. Other advantages of having a living trust are that the successor trustee can manage the assets on your behalf if you become disabled or incapacitated during your lifetime and assets in the trust avoid the probate process upon death. Because you still maintain control of the assets within the trust, they remain part of your taxable estate. However, a revocable living trust can also include provisions to help reduce estate taxes after your death. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope that you found it useful and valuable. It's important to note that these laws are very state specific. Be sure you work with an attorney who is familiar with what your state allows. Another best practice is to share this document in advance of an illness with your doctors so they are familiar with your wishes. Our next video will discuss key people in their estate planning roles plus beneficiary arrangements. Thank you. To learn more, call 1-800-722-1258.